Hi everyone, Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs here. I wanted to show you today how to paint this cup of coffee using alcohol ink. All the products used in this video will be listed below in the description box, so take a look if you have any questions. And I want to go over the list of supplies that you'll need to create this painting. And I'll give you the colors that I'm using, but of course you can use whatever colors you like. I used denim, pebble, teakwood, sandal, and slate, and these are all by Ranger. And you'll need brushes, a dry palette, alcohol, photo paper, a round bowl, a pencil, and a gel pen. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's get started with this painting. This is the sample that I did, and this is the watercolor that I did the night before. I wanted to see if I could replicate it using alcohol ink, and I think it turned out pretty well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to trace the circle onto your paper. I'm using this small bowl. So trace your first circle, and then once you're done tracing that one, inside that circle you're going to create another circle. Don't worry about it being perfectly round. You can straighten that all out with the ink. What you're doing now is just creating guidelines to follow. Okay, so we have our second circle. Now I'm going to draw an outline for the area where I want my foam to be. And then the handle for the mug. Be careful what type of eraser you use on photo paper because it leaves kind of like a smudge mark and the ink does not behave the same on that mark as it does on the rest of the paper. I prefer to, to use a kneadable eraser, but I couldn't find mine, so I had to use what I had available. I'm using a dry palette for this painting. If you have any questions regarding a dry palette, what it is, how to use it, check out my vid the video that I posted recently all about a dry palette and all those questions will be answered. So I first color I'm using is a denim and I'm using that to outline the rim of the coffee mug. Again, don't worry about everything being straight and staying within the lines. You can always clean up any mistakes with a little piece of paper towel, a Q-tip, or even a, a micro brush dipped in alcohol. You can just wipe it away. So. Don't worry about it, everything being within the lines. Just have fun with this. Now I'm using the color sandal to fill in the area where I want my foam to be. And I'm going to tell you now, I had such a hard time with the creating the coffee and making it look smooth. And the best advice that I can give you is what I did later on after the video. I went back and I went over it. Make your brush a little bit wetter than you would normally. And load it up really well with the color teakwood. That's the color that I used. Spread it around, let it settle, and let it dry. But I was too excited. I went to Michael's this morning and they had a sale. I was going to buy one artist quality, uh, professional quality watercolor brush because they're expensive. So I figured I would use my 20% off coupon and I would get one brush. And as it turns out, they had buy one, get 50% off the second one. So I bought new brushes. I'm really excited to use them. And I think that's what's, what was on my mind while I was doing this painting. So I fiddled with trying to make my coffee look smooth way too much. And of course, as the alcohol dries and you're still running your brush on it, what you're doing is creating texture. So what you want to do, again, is have your brush a little bit wetter than you normally would, spread, load it up really good with the ink, and put it down. And leave it alone. Don't fiddle with it like you see me doing here. At one point, I was stippling, and it ended up looking like oatmeal in, in the cup. So don't play with it too much. Just put it down and leave it alone. <laughs> 
I had so much, so much texture going on in that cup of coffee. So now I'm creating a little shade, but you only want shade on one side of the coffee cup. And I'm doing it on the top here. And you want it almost like a half moon. So you want it a little bit wider at the top. And as you come to the side of the cup, you want to taper it. And for the shadow, I'm using the color Slate. And now because the shadow is touching the foam, I'm using a clean brush, just dipping it in, alcohol, in the alcohol, drying it off on my paper towel, and I am lifting the ink so that I still have a white line all the way around the coffee. You can also use this method to straighten out your lines, which I'm doing here. Dipping the brush in the alcohol, dabbing it on my paper towel to make sure I don't have too much alcohol on it, and I'm just lifting the paint, or rather the ink. And here I go, fiddling with that coffee again. Now you'll see my brush is pretty wet. And I'm just running it across the ink. And you see it looks kind of smooth. If I had just left it alone, it would have been fine. But of course I didn't do that. So now I'm painting the handle of the coffee mug and I'm cre I'm using um, saturated cup not saturated color I'm using a little bit of alcohol and a lot of ink and once I create the outline I'm just using the brush to blend that color in because I want a little bit of highlight in the center of that handle so I only want it to be darker around the edges And if you get it too dark, just use a clean brush and lift off some of that ink and then blend it in again. Now I'm taking a very small brush and I'm outlining the outer edge of the rim because I want that to be a little bit darker. Using just a little bit of alcohol and a lot of ink. And now we're going to create the bubbles in the foam. So I'm putting very little alcohol on the brush and loading it up with a lot of ink and I'm using teak wood for the bubbles and I'm just creating little circles in different sizes and as I get to the edge or the more narrow part of the foam I'm creating smaller dots so make sure to vary the sizes of your circles and try not to create a pattern I know it's hard And just fill in that area with as many as you like, making sure that they're in different sizes. And then what I did, I noticed that the foam was blending too much into the white line just on the other side of it. So I took the color Pebble with a little bit of alcohol and... Um, more pigment, more ink on the brush. I'm just outlining it so that there's um, a more defined line between that white highlight of the cup and the foam. And now I'm going to use a gel pen to add a little highlight to those bubbles. And I'm just putting a little dot on the larger bubbles. And now if you don't have a gel pen, you can use a, a micron pen with a very small nib or you can use snow cap applied with a tiny brush. But adding that highlight really makes a difference. It looks great. Now I'm going to create 
the coffee stain, the coffee mug stain. So I'm laying the bowl over the cup of coffee and creating a line to follow, just a guideline, and I'm using the color pebble. And I'm just using the tip of the brush, just stabbing it here and there and creating a coffee stain. This is pretty easy. And now I'm going to cover the cup and the handle using my eraser because I want to splatter some coffee on the painting. So I dipped my brush in the alcohol and keeping it wet and I went into the color pebble and I'm just tapping the brush either against my finger or with my finger to create the splatter. And if you find that you got some splatter on your coffee cup, just go over it with a little bit of the blue or whatever color you're using for your mug and blend it in. It's fine. So this was pretty simple. I hope you give it a try. Make sure to tag me in it. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Thanks, guys.